carbide or traditional high-speed steel tool, which is best? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between the carbide scraper and traditional turning tools. Now there's a lot of controversy about these particular tools and many people like to take sides one way or the other. I'm going to go through in this video the pros and cons of each of these tools and I'm going to help you determine what works best for you because not everybody turns the same and everybody has different needs when it comes to turning tools. So let's dive right in. For those of you that follow me on this channel, you know that I turn bowls. So we're primarily going to be talking about the bowl gouge when we're talking about traditional turning tools and I'm going to be comparing that to the carbide scrapers. Now. When it comes to the carbide scrapers, carbide scrapers are relatively new to the field. These have been around for just a few years now and you can buy them from a variety of different manufacturers and you can actually make them yourself. They're pretty simple and straightforward. You've got a, a shaft that usually has a flat bottom so that it'll rest well on the tool rest and you have a sharp carbide tip that's usually fastened into the shaft with a screw so it's removable. With the bull gouge, the bull gouge has been around for a while there's different stories about when this evolved, but it's probably somewhere in the 70s, possibly earlier than that, that this particular parabolic shaped bowl gouge was originally introduced and popularized in the wood turning industry. So this has been around for a long time, which brings up some of the controversy that we have when you talk to people about carbide scrapers. Some people get very defensive on one way or one side or the other because Perhaps they're used to turning with bull gouges and they think that this is some type of imposter and some people just get defensive about what they're used to doing and we have to keep that in mind. But in this video we're going to go over the pros and cons of each. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. I'm going to start with the carbide scraper first. Okay, let's talk about the pros of the carbide scrapers. First off, the learning curve is very quick. Essentially, you need to put the scraping edge on center and scrape away and that's all there is to it. You don't really have skills that need to be learned to use this tool very quickly. All right, the second pro for the carbide scrapers is the fact that you don't have to sharpen them and you don't need a sharpening station. These tips are incredibly sharp and they hold their edge for a very long time. And when they do dull in an area, you can loosen the little set screw and rotate the tip to an area and that's sharp and continue cutting. Once this tip is dull all the way around, you can actually sharpen this by hand and I go into great detail showing exactly how to do that in my tool sharpening online e-course. You might want to check that out. Or you can replace the tip and put another new tip in, in its place and continue going. You don't need that sharpening station. All right, let's talk about some of the negative things about the carbide scrapers. They are not cheap and you need at least three of them to turn a bowl. You need a round one for doing the interior, you need a flat one for doing the exterior, and you're going to need a notched one to do any kind of detail work such as a tenon. So you need three tools and these, like I said, these can be expensive. I have short versions of these because I buy my own tools and I basically use these for small scraping elements. I don't use them to turn large bowls or do larger projects like that. They could be used for that, but I use them for small detail work, so I don't need the larger tools. But if you're going to use these tools to turn bowls, you're going to want longer handles and larger tools. And those tool sets can get into the $300, $350 range for a set of three. Now, again, you can make these yourselves if you'd like to do that. But in general, these are much more expensive than a traditional bowl gouge. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. The second drawback with the carbide scrapers is there's no bevel to help guide your cuts. You're dependent 100% on your body movement on the tool rest and without any additional support from a bevel. So that's a bit of a drawback when you're trying to make smooth, nice flowing cuts through a bowl or a, any turning for that matter. Okay, the third negative aspect for the carbide scraper is the fact that it's a scraper. It's being introduced at the center of the cutting line at a 90 degree angle to the bowl as it comes across the edge and it's scraping fibers off of the bowl. It is not cutting them, it's essentially ripping them off. And because of that, the carbide scrapers will leave a rougher 
less refined surface than a traditional bowl gouge. And I'm going to show you examples of that close up in just a minute. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of the traditional bowl gouge. Well, first off, there is a bevel edge here and that bevel edge supports your cut. What do I mean by that? Well, when you're riding the bevel, this bevel is actually acting like a guide, almost like the fence on a table saw. It's guiding the cutting tip and providing extra support while you're making your cut. Yes, your your, the way you're holding the tool and your body motion and the way it's being held on the tool rest are all very important and very critical, but the bevel also assists you when you're making a cutting pass. The second big advantage of the traditional bowl gouge is versatility. You can shape the profile of this bowl gouge in a variety of different configurations based on what you need and what you want to achieve and you can have multiple bowl gouges with different profiles for different purposes. This happens to be a 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge and this bowl gouge can produce at least four different cuts and four different cuts that I use on a regular basis. There's the push cut, the pull cut, the scraping cut, and the shear scraping cut. Those four cuts all have different characteristics and they can be used for roughing, and they can be used for making really smooth, refined surfaces on the exterior of the bowl as well. So you have a whole variety of different things you can do with that. This same bowl gouge could be reshaped to be a micro bevel, which is designed to get deep into vessels and make a beautiful cut on the surface, all while riding the bevel still. So you can do a lot of different things with the bowl gouge to get the results you're looking for. The third advantage of the traditional bowl gouge, and this is a biggie, it's the cut quality and the finish quality of the final piece. Because this cutting edge is slicing through the wood fibers, it's making clean cuts. And when you have clean cuts, you have smooth surface. This bull gouge, when used properly, does not rip or tear fibers. Instead, it slices right through them and cuts them. And the final surface of your turn wood bowls will be really smooth with the traditional bull gouge. If this video is helping you understand these tools a little bit better, do me a huge favor and click that like button below the screen, would you please? Thank you, I greatly appreciate that. Okay, let's talk about the negative aspects of the traditional bull gouge. Well, first off, there's a relatively large learning curve. This tool is not easy to use initially and you need to practice a little bit, but with some time and some patience, you can become proficient with this. It doesn't happen overnight, but you will learn the different techniques. You'll learn how to ride the bevel, you'll learn how to hold the bowl gouge properly, and you'll learn how to present it to the bowl blank in a variety of different ways. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to do this specifically, you need to check out my Wood Bowl Turning online e-course. It's perfect for anybody that's getting started or that's turned for a while is struggling. I go through the entire process of turning a wood bowl from start to finish and we're using a bowl gouge in the process. Along the way, as you're making beautiful bowls, you're going to be learning everything you need to know about how to use the bowl gouge properly. So the learning curve can be a little bit steep with the bowl gouge, especially compared to the carbide scraper, but it's something that you can definitely achieve. The second negative aspect about the bowl gouge is you need to have a sharpening station. It's not optional. This steel is wonderful steel and it holds a sharp edge for quite a long time, not as long as the carbide scrapers, and it's going to need to be sharpened. Now, how, how often? Well, that depends on what you're turning. If you're turning hard, dense, dry wood, such as oak, you may need to sharpen pretty frequently. If you're turning green wood that's softer and more like a bar of soap, you may not have to sharpen quite as often, but you're going to need a sharpening station because you will have to sharpen. So that's one of the negative aspects of the traditional bull gouge. All right, let's look at cost. As I mentioned earlier, if you're going to turn a bowl, you're going to need to have three different scrapers to make that happen. You're going to need a flat scraper for the exterior, a round scraper for the interior, and you're going to need a diamond scraper for any kind of detail work, such as the um, dovetail on the tenon. Now, on the other hand, you could turn an entire bowl with just a half inch bowl gouge. And if you want to look, I'm going to put a, a link up here to a video about with a bowl that I turned entirely with this half inch bowl gouge. They come in different sets from different companies. These are relatively small 
And I only use these for minor detail work. I don't use them for turning an entire bowl from start to finish. There are longer tools that have longer handles that are more stout, that are better designed for turning bowls. If you're gonna turn a bowl from start to finish, you're gonna want bigger, larger tools, carbide tools than what you're seeing here. And those can be expensive. Those can run from three to $350 for a set of three. Whereas a bowl gouge can be 50 to $100 and it can do an entire bowl. But you also need to have a sharpening station with this, and a sharpening station can be several hundred dollars, and a good sharpening station can be well over several hundred dollars. So depending on exactly what you get, the cost, they're almost the same. If you get a nice set of large tools, carbide tools, for turning wood bowls, they could easily be close to the cost of one bowl gouge in a sharpening system. As we mentioned earlier, sharpening, basically the carbide tips, you just loosen them and rotate the tip to a, a, to a new fresh area. And when the full bit or the tip is dull, you can sharpen it by hand, but you can also just replace that tip with a new tip and continue turning. The bowl gouge has to be taken to a sharpening station and it needs to be sharpened properly whenever the performance of the cutting edge is diminishing. You're going to have to sharpen that. So that's the difference between the sharpening aspects of the carbide versus traditional tools. All right, when it comes to versatility, there's three different things you can do with these essentially, and you can kind of get a little bit tricky with tilting them and trying to get some shear scrape with them, but essentially you're introducing the tool at a 90 degree angle and you're making a scraping cut with the carbide scrapers. The bull gouge has a lot of versatility both in how you hold it, how you present it to the bowl in various configurations, and what finish this will provide for you. This tool can rough out quickly a bowl blank, and at the same time, it can provide a nice, smooth, refined finish on the surface of a bowl, all without changing or doing anything different other than changing my position and the orientation of how I present this to the bowl. Okay, the fourth and probably the most profound difference is in what they're actually doing to the wood surface of the bowl when you're turning. The carbide scrapers are scraping. When this tool is introduced, it's being introduced at almost a 90 degree angle, and that is a pretty steep impact for the wood to be striking this surface. Even though this tip is very sharp, it's still scraping, and it's tearing fibers off of that wood. And when you tear fibers, you're gonna have a rough surface. That's just how the process works. Where on the other hand, the bull gouge, when it's held properly and angles are introduced, if you happen to see the video that I created on how to use a bull gouge, I demonstrate in there the comparison between using a bull gouge and whittling. And what we're doing is we're taking that hard impact that the carbide scraper has and we're introducing different angles, both by rotating the flute and dropping the handle. And when we do that, we're presenting that cutting edge at an angle and we're making a slice across the bowl blank. We're not tearing and ripping fibers out. We're making a beautiful cut. And that's a huge advantage if you want to have a good quality surface on your turned bowl. Okay, here you can see the shavings from the traditional bowl gouge. These are clean, crisp shavings. You can tell they have a nice, crisp, hard edge on them and they've been cut cleanly from the bowl blank. Now here are the shavings from the carbide scraper. You can tell here that these have been shaved off. You have fine dust. There are some thin like veneers or layers of material that were scraped off, but again these are scrapings and that's a big difference in the cut quality between the traditional bowl gouge and the carbide scraper. I get a lot of comments and emails from people that imply that I'm trying to be a purist or a traditionalist by using a, a traditional bull gouge versus using a scraper. And what they're sort of implying is that a scraper and a bull gouge are equal, but a bull gouge, kind of the way that's always been done. So I'm just kind of doing it because I'm traditional that way. And I really should update to the scrapers because that's a new thing and I, I should just kind of go along that road. And I think that's where some people get defensive about this. They get defensive about the bull gouge is best or they get defensive about the scraper does a perfect job and you don't need a bull gouge. And there's no reason to be defensive that way. But I hope that I've illustrated 
both through the different examples and what you're seeing here, that the bull gouge actually cuts fibers versus the scraping of fibers, which occurs with a carbide scraper. That's not traditional or contemporary. That's a cut versus a scrape. And in pretty much any book, a cut is going to leave a cleaner surface versus a scrape. And that's why I personally prefer to use the bull gouge. All right, now with all that being said, which tool is best for you? Now that you better know the pros and cons of a carbide scraper compared to a traditional bull gouge, you can make the decision that works best for you. Now, I know you just heard me say that the bull gouge is my pre preference, and I like it because it makes a nice cleaning, clean cut, but there's disadvantages. I have to have a sharpening station. I've spent a lot of time practicing and learning how to use the bull gouge. Those can be setbacks for some people. Now, who is that? Who might the carbide scrapers be best for? Well, if you're just a hobbyist that wants to sample wood bowl turning a little bit and dabble in it, and you're not sure if you want to get into it, carbide scrapers might be a great way to start. If you are a woodworker, but you're not focused on the lathe and you're not focused on turning, but occasionally you need to turn something real quick for a project. Maybe you're doing knobs on a cabinet or you're doing some type of turn part. Maybe you're doing legs for a chair that you're making. Well, the carbide scraper might be perfect for you because you don't have to have that big investment into a sharpening station. You don't have to take all that extra time to learn how to use the bull gouge. You could essentially start using the carbide scraper and get really good results. You may need to sand a lot more because that surface is going to be rough, but you will get results that should be just fine. So who might benefit best from using the bull gouge? I would say essentially anybody that's serious about turning wood bowls and they know that they want to get into this to learn the art of turning wood bowls, you're really going to want to gravitate towards the bowl gouge. Now, with that being said, you don't have to have just bowl gouges. You could potentially start with the carbide scrapers just to get a feel for it and then kind of graduate and move up to the bowl gouges. And you can combine both of them. You can turn with a bull gouge and you can use carbide scrapers if you want. There are no right and wrong ways. Essentially, you just need to know the difference and understand the pros and cons of both the carbide scraper and the bull gouge and do what works best for you. That's the bottom line. If you're going to be frustrated by using the bull gouge and having to buy an expensive sharpening system and a month from now you might not be using it, well then don't do that. Get a carbide scraper and just experiment with turning and see if you like it. If you get hooked and you think, wow, this is the best and you find yourself out there in your shop on a regular basis turning, then you might want to use a bull gouge and move up to the bull gouge. So I hope this video has helped you guys understand a little bit more about which tools might be best for you. There is no one size fits all. What works for you is great. It might not work for the next person and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no reason to be defensive about the bull gouge or the, or the carbide scraper. There's no right or wrong. Again, use what works best for you. All right, guys, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, do me a huge favor and click that like button below the screen right now. Yeah, the little thumbs up. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up on that. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, until next time, happy turning.